All right, guys, this is William Agnew. Welcome back to another advanced training we're going to be doing here at Cellular Repair School. And today what we're going to be doing, showing you guys is a charging port replacement. And we're going to be using the standard uh, mini USB uh, charging port. Um, so we're going to be taking this one off and replacing it and showing you guys how to do that. And what I want you guys to see, so what I want to show you guys here is that when we plug it in, you'll actually see right here on the battery, that there's a charger, um, uh, it's, it's a, if you guys can see it, it's a lightning bolt that signifies that the charger's working, all right? There's a lightning bolt that signifies that the charger's working. You guys may be able to see it. If I unplug it, it goes away. If I plug it in, it actually comes back. So that verifies that our charging cord is actually working, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to disassemble this phone. All right, so what we've done is disassemble, totally disassembled our uh, unit. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove our charging port. Our charging port is located right here, as you guys can see. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can get an up close uh, look at it. So we have our charging port here. As you guys can see, it's on there, nice and good, still works. We have our uh, headphone jack pretty close. Our audio jack is really close to our charging port. Um, we also have chips. If you look very closely um, to uh, right beside this charging port, you'll see their resistors. Resistors are typically black on phones. You guys probably heard that in the previous part of the training too. Typically, if you see a little black chip, it's it typically it's a resistor. Uh, they're typically black um, in color. Um, so you got to be careful with that. Now, what I would suggest at this time is always do your prep, guys. Always do your prep. Uh, you don't have to do prep with the technique we're going to be showing you guys because the technique we've actually uh, come up with show, uh, allows you to actually remove plastic without melting it or damaging it without using any captain's tape. But with that being said, I always lean to the side of caution uh, when repairing customers' phones. So anything that's gonna you know, prevent possible damage even more, you always wanna do that. So what I'll do is I'll use Kapton tape, all right? And this is Kapton tape, show you guys. And what you, what you want to do with this particular type uh, repair with Captain Tape is you want to cover up things that potent, potentially could be damaged. So as you notice, on this particular board, we actually have holes right here in this RF shielding. So one thing I would do is definitely put Captain Tape right on top of those holes because we're going to be blowing hot air uh, down in those holes. Um, uh, I would probably put a little tape on top of this uh, audio jack, okay, just to protect it to make sure it doesn't melt because we're talking about plastic here and plastic has a very uh, uh, low temperature melting point. Um, and also on top, what you see on this charging port, and some charging ports come uh, this way, is that this charging port already has a slit of captain's tape on top of it. Um, so in a case that this was a bad charging port, obviously you wouldn't have to worry about taking it off and damaging it. But in the case where you're trying to salvage a, uh, a, a charging port and use it on a different board, you need to know how to take it off without damaging it. And what, what that involves is, all, is putting the captain tape on top of it. Captain tape, as you guys know, is a heat resistant tape. So you wanna put that anywhere you feel like you might compromise um, the board with your on top heat, okay? So with that being said, we've already put our logic board uh, in up and down uh, switch or uh, basically cool and warm switch. Now this analog switch over here controls your temperature. And where we wanna set this temperature, um, with our preheater is anywhere between two. So now what we want to do guys is we want to set our rework station. Now we're going to take our tweezers. So you always want to have your tweezers. Okay. And then we're going to take our blow off our rework station. And we're going to give that about 30 seconds to ramp up to its proper heat. Okay. So you want to give it about 30 seconds. Then you begin to check it every five to 10 seconds. Every five to 10 seconds, we check again. Not ready, we pull back. And we check again. And there we have some movement, but what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna rush it because we don't wanna damage our pins in the back. And it will easily lift off guys when it's ready so it will literally right on top like so take your iron 
and just lay your iron right on top of where the solder is and just kind of roll it back and forth. All right, as it melts and liquefies, what's gonna happen is your solder wire is going to soak up the old solder, right? And I, ideally, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this as flat as possible, all right? What you can do at this point is you can go look at this under your microscope to see if you do have any bridging. Uh, if you do, it's all good. We're gonna clean that up anyway. So the next thing we wanna do um, in this particular process is we're gonna add some liquid flux to this. Now, flux is a cleaning agent. It does two things. It cleans and it gets rid of oxidations and it also helps us separate the bridging, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a Q-tip. We've done that. We've applied our solder flux, which is this. This is our solder flux, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply our paste. And this is solder paste, all right? So this is basically a paste that is used. It is solder. It comes out in paste form. What we wanna do is we're going to heat up that paste. And what you guys should begin to see is that paste start to take form. It's nice and shiny and it pulls to your contact pads. It just works better like this. You can see that flux begin to evaporate. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go in between each one of these grooves to clean up any bridging we might have if we notice bridging under our microscope. Brush. And our alcohol. So we're gonna use our toothbrush and our alcohol And you want to make sure you don't drop any alcohol in your preheater, right? Heat and alcohol, you want to be very careful, guys. Matter of fact, I would advise taking this board off, letting it cool, and then using the alcohol to clean it. But what we're going to do is use some alcohol, clean that right up. Offs or liquefies. The charging port goes completely in. Just keep a little pressure on it and remove your heat. Really quick process. And then what you want to check, guys, is you all want to check, you want to look at the back, because this is where your functionality is on these back pins. So you want to check these back pins in the very back, these pins right here, right in the very back, and you want to make sure those are aligned properly, okay? And you can do that by checking it under your microscope. And there you have it, a complete removal and replacement of your charging port. Now what we would do, flip that to cool, let it cool off. Again, we want to apply as least amount of time with heat. This took me a little longer than it normally would because this is an instructional video. But guys, this should probably take you the whole process of removal and replacement as far as heat, applying heat is concerned. No more than, you know, five to ten minutes of heat. All right. No more than five to ten minutes of heat. Your initial removal is probably going to be about three to four minutes of heat. And then your replacement is probably going to be should be no more than another minute. So really it should be somewhere between, you know, like I said, five and 10 minutes, okay, of heat. Again, you wanna minimize your heat so that you're doing less risk of damaging any other component. And what you guys also saw, again, is we never even covered up this micro, uh, excuse me, this audio jack right here, which is totally plastic. We didn't have any chips that moved, uh, so everything was pretty much uh, okay, all right? So what would we do in this case? We would take this, this board, reassemble, let it cool. Definitely let it cool. So give it about 10 minutes to cool, 10, 15 minutes to cool, maybe even longer than that. Um, and then you want to replace, plug in your charger, and see if it works. All right? This is William Agnew. This has been another training, a charging port replacement training here at Cellular Repair School, and we'll see you guys in the next training.